Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jake Levine. I work in the White House Office of Energy and Climate Change, and I'm here with the Deputy Assistant to the President, Heather Zeichel, for Energy and Climate Change. Um, and she just came out of a meeting with the President uh, and a group of bipartisan senators to talk about comprehensive energy and climate legislation. And so I'm going to finish my very brief introduction and turn it over to Heather and uh, see if she wants to give us a brief readout of that meeting and then um, we'll jump into questions from you all. Great. Thanks, Jake. Uh, and thanks, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. Uh, as, as Jake mentioned, um, President Obama held a meeting today uh, in the Cabinet Room uh, with about two dozen members of the United States Senate, both Democrats and Republicans, to talk about the importance of passing comprehensive energy and climate legislation this year. It was a very productive dialogue, uh, a lot of uh, uh, new ideas um, and, and uh, concepts about how we put together a path to get 60 votes in the Senate uh, were, were discussed. I think um, the President left the meeting feeling very encouraged about our prospects um, for a victory uh, later this summer um, uh, in terms of getting, getting a bill that allows us to reduce our dependence on foreign oil, uh, create clean energy jobs, and transition to a clean energy economy. So with that, uh, we will go on to take some of the questions from you today. Thanks, Heather. Um, so why don't we start uh, along those lines and talk about some of the specifics of the energy bill. We've gotten a couple of questions from folks um, asking what it's going to look like. Um, Jeff Young uh, says, Ms. Zeichel, can you please comment on the administration's level of commitment to including a cap on carbon emissions in energy legislation? Will the president insist that an energy bill put a price or cap on carbon, or will he allow an energy-only approach? And then uh, Josh Nelson sort of had a similar question. He says, the president's statement today said he believes the best way to transition to a clean energy economy is to put a price on carbon. But during the healthcare debate, he used a very similar language to describe his preference for a public option. Will the president insist that energy legislation he signs this year include a price on carbon? Uh, great questions, both of them. Thank you, uh, both Jeff and Josh. Um, I think what the president reiterated today and, and has um, had a consistent position on is the fact that we need to place a price on carbon pollution. Polluters need to pay for their, for their pollution. Um, he made it very clear that, uh, you know, this, this price on carbon is important um, not only uh, for us to be able to build this transition to a clean energy economy, but it's also something that we have heard time and time again from industry uh, and from other supporters. They need the predictability, they need the certainty in the marketplace to be able to make the decisions that, uh, that, that they need to make. Um, the, the, uh, obviously, the comprehensive approach that the president's been talking about, whether it was on the campaign trail or since he's been in office, uh, is, is something that he remains very committed to. Um, you know, the energy and climate are two sides of the same coin, and uh, both of those things need to go uh, together hand in hand. Um, at the same time, I think uh, exactly how you iron out those details, um, what what um, you know, what is what? How robust is that energy portfolio? Um, we talked about things, including a renewable electricity standard, more support for biofuels, uh, continued domestic oil and gas production. But then on the cap, I think uh, what was interesting about today's discussion was um, there there are different ways that you might be able to achieve this objective. You know, some people have talked about economy wide. There's also additional discussion about maybe just going after a stationary source only cap. Um, and, and again, uh, based on the discussion today, I think we feel good about uh, opportunities to come together and, and find some common ground to pass the legislation this year. Thanks. Um, maybe a follow-up to that question came in while you were, um, while you were speaking. Luke O'Neill asked, why won't the administration push for carbon fees with rebates instead of cap and tax when we know carbon fees will be more effective and efficient? Um, I, I think what uh, the, the president has supported what it has, has been something um, called a, a, a cap-and-trade system, uh, similar to the, the, the good work that, um, the, that uh, Chairman Waxman and other members in the House um, were able to produce um, in, with, with a comprehensive bill in, in, the, in, in, in the House last summer when that passed. Uh, we also um, have a number, as I, as I said earlier, of ideas about how to 
um, put that price on carbon pollution uh, in the Senate. I think um, many, many people have, have looked at different ways to do that, but what's important is making sure that we are protecting consumers in the process and making sure that we are protecting the manufacturing base, and we think that there are ways to do that um, through a comprehensive approach. Great, thanks. Um, there's a lot of traffic on sort of maybe just a, a background question which might be helpful to spend a brief amount of time on. Laura D. Simone asked, please define clean energy. Very good question. Um, I think, uh, you know, obviously there, there are um, uh, a, a, a lot of probably differing opinions on this. I think the administration as a whole uh, thinks about the uh, about clean energy as something that uh, has a low carbon profile, low emissions profile, low pollution profile. Um, we have invested heavily in the administration in clean energy. I think the the Recovery Act investments, uh, the largest investment in American history, um, uh, you know, helped funnel a lot of dollars to what we would deem clean energy investments. That's. Uh, money to um, you know build more wind turbines uh, and solar panels, additional funding to build out smart grid technologies, and then the last piece of this um, is you know it's not all about what you're doing to generate electricity, but also what you're doing to save electricity. I would also put in the clean energy bucket, um, investments in energy efficiency, whether that's you know to make your homes and businesses more energy efficient. Or you know we're spending a lot of money uh, and creating a lot of jobs to build batteries for the new, more efficient cars and trucks of the future. So again, I think that's another example of how our administration defines clean energy. Thanks, Heather. Um, you know, one uh, there's been a fair amount of traffic on the uh, oil spill in the Gulf, and I think that's something that's on a lot of people's minds. Um, Eric Holland asked uh, if we can cut our in, if we can cut our dependence on foreign oil. How can we make the transition more quickly from oil to renewable sources? Great question. Uh, and, and I think having uh, actually just returned uh, from the Gulf yesterday, uh, you know, the, the president spoke directly to this in his Oval Office address that what's happening now in the Gulf is certainly a reminder of our need to break our dependence on fossil fuels. And, and I think that theme again also came up in the bipartisan meeting with the senators. Uh, the administration as a whole has really um, aggressively pursued policies to reduce our dependence on oil. Uh, one of the, one of the um, biggest opportunities for us is obviously to invest in the efficiency of our fleet uh, of automobiles, our, our cars and trucks. And uh, one of the, one of the in, in the early days of the administration, the first year of the administration, uh, we successfully um, broken an agreement uh, to aggressively increase efficiency standards for models year 2011 to 2016 for, for cars and trucks. So we're going to be, uh, by about 4% annually, uh, increasing the efficiency of, of those vehicles, thereby saving um, actually 1.8 billion gallons of oil over the lifetime of, of the the, uh, of the program. So it's a terrific example of what this administration is doing um, to cut our dependence on oil. Obviously something that plays very closely into not only our environmental uh, goals, but also our national security and strategic goals. Great. Um, let's switch gears a little bit here and, and maybe talk about some of the different sources uh, of energy um, that, that are on the table. Um, there have been a fair amount of questions about nuclear energy, and one sort of straightforward one comes from Adam Dorr. He asks, will nuclear energy, energy be part of the clean energy mix supported by this administration? Um, well, as uh, I, I, to quote the, the president's science advisor, Dr. John Holdren, he has, he has a quote, um, there are no silver bullet solutions for our nation's energy challenges, only silver buckshot. And I think what he means is that we have to invest in a number of different uh, energy technologies and energy sources in order to achieve uh, energy security, but also ultimately our climate objectives. And uh, from the, the president um, feels strongly that nuclear power is part of what uh, constitutes a secure energy uh, portfolio. Um, we actually, the administration granted um, a, a, uh, a tax credit for the um, development of a new facility, the first, um, we'll be breaking ground for the first nuclear facility in about 30 years. 
uh, here domestically, and those are, um, you know, not only creating more carbon-free energy, but also uh, a lot of jobs in the process, which is uh, which is obviously front and center on the president's mind. Um, you know, some some questions have come in uh, about waste and what we're doing there, and I think what's important to flag is that. Uh, the administration has created and established a blue ribbon panel commission to look at back end uh, uh, waste issues and make some recommendations about how best to handle those both environmentally and from a proliferation perspective. Great. Um, another topic that's come up uh, quite a bit is geothermal. Mm -hmm. um, Michael Bunting asked, why do we not pursue more geothermal energy resources? We have plenty of areas that this, that this would be applicable and could tie into the grid easily? Great question, Michael. Um, I think the, you know, again, getting back to the no silver bullet, obviously we are looking at a number of different energy sources and geothermal is one of those. Um, but in order to do that, we need to create the right set of system, uh, the right set of incentives um, and, and, uh, and policies around that. Uh, one of the things um, that, that has been so successful about the Recovery Act is a tax credit program. Um, so through the Recovery Act uh, investments, we are seeing more geothermal energy projects come online. Uh, the other thing, um, the, other, the other added bonus uh, of passing comprehensive energy and climate legislation is that um, you know, we would hope to include a renewable electricity standard, which says a certain amount of renewable en energy comes from, uh, uh, or a certain percentage of energy comes from renewable sources by a date certain. And the more predictability uh, we can create through a renewable electricity standard, the better off we all will be and, and uh, will create a better, um, a better push and pull for geothermal energy sources. And um, in that same question, Michael sort of raised the question of the grid, and some other folks were talking about the smart grid um, and the nation's um, transmission um, uh, apparatus. And Michelle uh, Barone Barry asked, we know our electrical grid is antiquated. Will this be the initial number one job creator for our country? And then she says, to follow up on my first question, in reference to rebuilding our electrical grids and new job creation, what other sustainable jobs are in our future? Great questions. Um, I think I think the answer on the grid is is twofold. One is, as you point out, yes, it is an antiquated grid, and we need to make some significant upgrades. Uh, the good news is that the Recovery Act also included um, additional funding for smart grid technology. These technologies will allow us to um, use devices to um, allow and ensure consumers can save money at home. Uh, so a big a, a big win for for consumers because you're saving dollars, but also an environmental win because you know using less energy means uh, uh, and uh, a plus for the environment. Um, we have. Uh, through these investments in the Recovery Act and, and in the grid, also seen a lot with job creation, which is incredibly important um, as well. And, and I think the last piece of this is just as, as, as I, the President has said before, um, building out the grid and, 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 uh, and bringing these new technologies online will ultimately be helpful because we need to be able to facilitate a situation where we have um, you know, the, 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 the windy, vast windy areas of the plains. We're able to move, you know, when we put up wind turbines and generate and create the electricity, we're able to move that into city, uh, to cities in more populated areas. And we're going to need the transmission lines to be able to carry that renewable electricity. So obviously that's a big priority for the administration. Great, thanks. Um, uh, another issue that, that we work on a lot here is efficiency. And there have been a number of questions uh, on that front. Um, Jim Michael asked, uh, I would like to know why our government cannot get a program like Homestar passed that will create 300,000 jobs and create a new workforce in green technologies. And, uh, and Ron Bordreau asked, will there be more encouragement from the government financially to citizens to put more energy efficiency in the home? Uh, great, and those two questions do go very well together. Homestar program um, is something that has been a priority for the administration, uh, and luckily, uh, I'm happy to report that legislation is moving through Congress. 
Uh, it is something that has bipartisan support because I think you know folks recognize whether it's you're a Democrat or a Republican, investing in energy efficiency is something that uh, is good across the board. Um, when you're able to um, install more energy efficient windows in your home, there are the jobs that have been created uh, by the folks building the windows, but then you're also putting those, um, those more energy efficient windows in your home, which saves you as the consumer money. Uh, so again, I think the Homestar program uh, is a win-win. The good news is that the legislation is moving through Congress and we're going to continue to work with them to get this legislation to the President's desk. Great. Um, there have been some follow-up questions about the climate legislation, comprehensive energy um, bill, and they're sort of around cost. Eugene Wilson asked pretty simply, how much is cap and trade going to cost the taxpayers? Um, well, one of the um, one of the, the priorities for those folks working on on the legislation, and, and obviously for the president, is that any um, any comprehensive energy and climate legislation that we pass needs to make sure that we're able to protect consumers um, from any any negative price impacts. And um, you know, EPA and the Energy Information Administration has done a lot of modeling and to look at different impacts of different legislative proposals. And in fact, the, the legislation that passed the House, we're talking about the cost of a postage, postage stamp a day in 2020. Uh, so, um, you know, we, we have experience and, and have um, a, a lot of, of, of um, opportunity to work to create the right set of incentives that will protect consumers as we're looking at um, putting this price and capping carbon pollution. Great, thanks. Um, you know, some folks are joining and they just have some questions uh, as well on, on um, what's going on down in the Gulf. Mm -hmm. And uh, one question regarding the workers um, helping to clean up, Betty Feynman said, how about putting these out of work oil rig workers to work in a massive clean energy initiative? Um, great question. I think there, the, the answer to that is twofold. One, as the president has made clear, we want to um, make sure that all those people impacted by the Gulf oil spill remain whole, and that's going to be a priority. Uh, you heard not long ago that the, the administration um, uh, announced a $20 billion escrow account uh, to help um, fund the claims um, process uh, and, and help anybody impacted. Um, by the spill, by the BP oil spill. Um, the second piece of this, obviously, is what are we going to do to um, look at long-term recovery efforts for the Gulf and, and job opportunities? And again, uh, you know, this is a priority for the president and something that he spoke to during his Oval Office address. Um, the the uh, Secretary of the Navy, Mabus. Um, will be visiting the Gulf region this week, and this is something he's been tasked with, which is putting together a plan to um, ensure economic restoration and environmental restoration of the Gulf region. And uh, this is something that he will be looking specifically at. What are we going to do to ensure um, you know, ample job opportunities uh, are available for, for um, anybody impacted by the spill? Great. Um, an interesting question sort of on the financing side from Michael McHugh um, just asked, can we set up a national investment bank to fund alternative energy, green technology, and so on that will stimulate the economy and create jobs? A terrific question. I, I think um, as, as we are all thinking about the, um, the, the, the prospects and, and the work in, in the Senate to pass comprehensive energy and climate legislation, uh, one idea um, that that has been uh, generated and 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 has received some support is, you know, what what is the right mix, whether that's through tax credits or direct grant programs, to fund these important programs. And again, I think you know I've said it earlier, but the 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 lessons learned from the Recovery Act program, where we have made these investments both in R and D, in manufacturing, and just uh, some some direct support for the renewables industry, have been a tremendous example of how we can uh, invest in job creation and the transition to a clean energy economy. And those are certainly in line with um, what what our goals for legislation would be. And then along the lines of of um, of increasing clean energy jobs, Laura Gilmore asked, how does the administration envision building a trained 
workforce to support this conversion to green energy? Well, one of the um, programs is actually administered through uh, the, the Department of Labor uh, that's been a tremendous success, which is to um, provide uh, provide grant programs, uh, grant dollars um, for, for workforce training uh, in, in green and clean energy technologies. So some of the things that we've been doing that with that are you know, going to uh, community college centers and helping set up programs so that you know, not only is it important to install the solar panels, but then you know, people need to be able to uh, maintain them. And um, uh, not only is it important to um, you know, be able to purchase a, a hybrid vehicle car, but people need to be able to work on, work on those vehicles and, and understand the, the, the battery technology. So um, across, across the board, I think we see um, these investments in clean energy as opportunities to create jobs. And uh, we are working through the Department of Labor on some specific programs to train the workforce of the future. Great. Well, I think that we might have time for just one more. Okay. Um, and a uh, question from Connor Dolan, uh, I'm sorry, from BJ Quinn on solar panels along those lines. Why have the solar panels not been reinstalled at the White House? Great question. Um, one of the things that the the that in in obviously in addition to um, you know, making these investments so that we can uh, bring uh, support for consumers and support for the industry, um, the federal government needs to be a leader in investing in clean energy technology. And uh, last year, the um, uh, through the great work of the White House Council of Environmental Quality, we were able to um, get a, uh, a to, to implement a sustainability executive order. So across the federal government, all of the agencies are looking at what actions they can take to invest in energy efficiency and clean energy technologies. Uh, and one of those things, obviously, is is um, for the White House to look at what we can do to invest in efficiency and and. Save uh, save energy across the board. So so those are all things that uh, the the entire federal government is doing uh, because we want to be a leader in this area and uh, we should um, we have we have a true opportunity uh, and we intend to take that chance. Thanks, Heather. Thank you.